Beach I call Sue Kedgley. Well, the Green Party rises uh, more in sorrow than in anger uh, at the uh, third reading of this bill. And, you know, once upon a time, we really in New Zealand took democracy very seriously. Uh, the uh, ancestors uh, fought for democracy. Uh, women fought for the right to participate in the democratic process. But, it's, but now... We but now we can get rid of an entire seven, to, in fact, ten, eight, eight, sorry, it's been a long debate. We can now get rid of eight city councils, democratically elected city councils, without, uh, without consulting with one single Aucklander about whether or not they wished to get rid of the uh, eight democratically elected councils in Auckland uh, representing one and a half million people. We wouldn't have had a problem if there had been a, uh, a vote and Aucklanders had agreed that they wanted to get rid of these uh, eight democratically elected councils. But the fact that this can be done with the stroke of a pen in this bill without ever insulting with a single Aucklander without ever seeking a mandate from the people of New Zealand, without warning voters in the election uh, manifesto that this was the plan that the, uh, that the National and ACT Party uh, had, without any, uh, without any mandate from the Royal Commission to just simply get rid of uh, eight councils and actually impose a new model of local governance, a uh, uh, model of, uh, in which a mayor in which the Mayor of Auckland will have powers that no other Mayor in New Zealand has. So why should, why should we suddenly come up with a new model in which the Mayor has these uh, unprecedented powers, powers available to no other Mayor or in anywhere in New Zealand, all of this without ever consulting with the people of Auckland or uh, alerting anyone uh, in, uh, in the manifesto? And I have to say that one of the things that has uh, slightly concerned the Green Party is the role of the media in this whole debate. Because the media has been moaning on about the fact that it's cost $10,000 a, a minute or something for this uh, parliament to meet. But no one that I'm aware of in the media has raised questions as to why it is that we should not be told what this transition is going to cost. Nobody in the media has asked that question. And the other thing is that nobody in the media has questioned the censorship provisions contained in this bill. There are provisions in this bill which amount to censorship, which say that this uh, hand-picked uh, cabal of uh, Rodney Hyde's two or three uh, men who will be running the transition agency, that they, they have the power to censor, to, to, uh, to override, to prevent any agenda item from being uh, debated over the next 18 months. Has anyone in the media expressed any concern about these censorship provisions? We're up in arms about what is happening in Fiji, where the government there is seeking, well, is, in fact, censoring the media. But when nobody seems to be concerned about the fact that in this bill there are provisions to allow the censorship of this uh, transition agency uh, over all of the councils of Auckland in the next 18 months. Nobody in the media either seems to be the slightest bit concerned about these three little words, as it sees fit, that have sneaked into this legislation. And, what, and the, these words create a new precedent in New Zealand, because these words say that the transition agency only has to let people know what it is up to if it sees fit. Now imagine if our pecuniary interest, we are supposed to, we have a register of pecuniary interest as MPs and we, uh, it's about to come out. In fact, we have to register our pecuniary interest and any conflicts of interest. Imagine if, they, if we put an amendment and said, we will declare our pecuniary interests as we see fit. The media would be absolutely up in arms. It would be scandal. It would be front page in the newspapers. The, the politicians are trying to withhold information about their pecuniary interests 
But yet not one single media has expressed any concern about the fact that this, we have this new precedent, and is it going to, having slipped into this bill, will it now be slipped into uh, all the other bills that come before this House, that we only have to, uh, we only have to divulge information as we see fit. So I have to say I am deeply disappointed that the media has been uh, so cynical about this and has not even picked up these provisions which amount to censorship, which amount to the ability to withhold information and to, exp uh, and to control uh, the, uh, the agenda item of councils over the next 18 months. Nor do them to be in the slightest bit concerned that all of this wiping out of a whole layer of democracy and new, um, imposing a new model of democracy, strong mayor model, uh, which really amounts to giving the Mayor of Auckland the powers of a SAR. They don't seem to be in the slightest bit concerned about that or the fact that it's been done through a passage of a legislation in haste without any consultation of one single Aucklander. It is an absolute basic principle of governance that if you are going to change the system of governance, you need to get a majority of the governed to assent to that. And that's why with referendums, when we seek to change uh, the system of governance, for example, the uh, MMP, we had a referendum. But this one, we changed the whole model of governance in Auckland without any referenda, without any consultation, without any mandate. And the media seems to think this is all a joke. Now, Rodney Hyde and Roger Douglas must be rubbing their hands with glee. There will be, I'm sure, a considerable celebration. It, maybe not tonight, they might be too tired, but later on, the champagne will be popping because they will say, we've done it again. We've completely conned the Aucklanders. And actually, not just Aucklanders, because once this has been foisted upon Aucklanders, we know it will then be rolled out uh, all over the uh, rest of New Zealand. So they've managed to con uh, the New Zealanders and Aucklanders into doing this. Uh, so they will be rubbing their hands. They've used those uh, the, 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 uh, the blitzkrieg, the, the ramming things through, the, the, all the tactics of what they perfected under Rogernomics. All of them have been brought out to uh, whip this through this house. And um, I think Ro uh, Roger Douglas will think that it was worthwhile that he came out of retirement to return to this house. He's rammed his agenda through. He's come up with the techniques. He's been advising them. How do you sneak it through? How do you slip in these little words as it sees fit? And maybe people won't uh, uh, understand their implications. And Rodney Hyde will think that it was really well worthwhile to choose the portfolio of Minister of Local Government because he has pulled off what amounts to a coup d'etat he, he has set Auckland up in a, such a way that at the next elections, not only will we expunge uh, eight city councils, democratically elected city councils in Auckland, but we will have this Auckland Council uh, with the, uh, the powers of the SAR for, the, for John Banks, the likely next mayor. And then, once John Banks is in complete control of the Auckland Council, he will unleash stage two, stage two, which is to sell off the assets, uh, or the $28 billion assets of uh, the local, uh, local councils combined. I, I have uh, sought to table this before, but I think I would like to, um, I didn't actually table it, so I'd like to table it here, because to me this is the only thing in the media which actually has encapsulated what is happening, what has happened after the last three days. Here it is, the maniacal, demonic vision of Rodney Hyde in his yellow jacket with his proud little act thing trampling on the councils of Waitakere of Papakura, of Rodney, of North Shore, of Manuko, of Franklin, stomping on them uh, with uh, triumphantly, and it is extraordinary that he has managed to do this 
in such a way that he has conned New Zealanders and that and he seems to have conned the media and he has got away with a coup d'etat uh, with, uh, with, in a quite extraordinary, stunning way. Rodney, I have to say I take my hat off to you. Rogernomics, part two. You've done it with devastating audacity, with devastating speed, and with seemingly having conned the media of New Zealand. Thank you. Mr Speaker. Thank you. Order, order, order. I've called Te Ora Ora Flavel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so.